In this episode, we cover a lot of ground. Share your thoughts about our products with us and with others. Are you sure you want to do that? But they also do pop up, so that's not an ideal element. So go back in time with Bob. We check out steam? Okay. And to check out something else that's smoking is the fellow modelers at North Metro. And also check out what the curmudgeon's gripe of the week is this week. Only in this episode of Sue the Milwaukee Road. It's recently come to our attention that our videos are over-edited and I talk too fast. So we're going to get a little more sophisticated, slow things down, and try to let you follow along. We're going to look at a couple of freight cars today, and we're not ripping on the manufacturers. We are merely holding them accountable. What does accountable mean? It means if we're going to spend $56 on a freight car, we want to get our money's worth. So as we look at these things as a direct comparison, it's not about how it's done. It's about, are we getting our money's worth? Think of it like a consumer report. A consumer report is this consumer reporting what they found. So hopefully you enjoy this little bit more tame and slowed down video. <laughs> oh, if anybody bought that, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure. I think you've been drinking the Kool-Aid. And this is apple juice, by the way. Some of the finest apple juice out there. I think it's Mott's. <laughs> it's time for another quiz. It was hard to miss the Sioux red and white caboose. Multiple orders were placed, making for unique differences between each batch. For example, number four had an affectionately named Destroylet, an incineration type toilet, which made for a small thin stack vent near the cupola that was needed. Do you know how many iconic red and white wide vision cabooses the Sioux line ordered? Was it A150? E, 145, C, 130, or D, 95. We'll find out later in this episode. A couple of manufacturers produced these ACF 4600 hoppers. The Chicago Northwestern rostered 500 of these. This particular car built in 1977. They lasted well into the 2020s. If you like execution at this level, I do. Please support us. I will. Share your thoughts about our products with us and with others. Are you sure you want to do that? This road could get bumpy. Buy with your local dealer or shop with us online. Mm, I love scotch. I love scotch. Scotch has got scotch. Here it goes down. Down into my belly. Mm -mm -mm. All right, we're going to do a head to head between Arrowhead models and Atherin Genesis. Rest assured that Arrowhead is delivering the most accurate ACF center flow ever produced. These are both ACF 4600 hoppers in CNW paint, and we're gonna kind of give a breakdown between the two of which one has details that I like better on it and why. And this is not a review of each car one by one and what works and what doesn't. Rather, if I were gonna buy a car, which car would I buy a second one of? Now let's start this just from the roof down. We'll start with the roof walk. The roof walk looks to be white or kind of a light gray on the Arrowhead model's car where this one here looks to be the natural, kind of the stainless or the steel look of the etched metal. Now, is it an attempt on the arrowhead to be able to look like more of an oxidized steel? I don't know. But if that's the attempt, this might be a little bit light, but if you weather it, it might actually be a nice background or canvas to be able to start from to be able to do that. These do have the circular holes in the roof walk, where these have the oblong holes. Oh boy, if you're looking at the roof walk pattern, you got problems. I got 99 problems. But between the two, I think this is actually a little bit more accurate to have the circular versus these more oblong. Uh, but at the end of the day, when I'm looking at the roof walks, I think aesthetically these look nicer. Structurally, this is a little weak. There are a few of them that pop up, but I'm gonna have to glue these down. Um, but Arrowhead Models has a few that it actually kind of dips and isn't the most consistent on the ends either. But if you've ever dealt with the etched metal, this stuff is a pain in the tail to work with. So they do pretty good to get it to look the way it does. Uh, Since so we go back in time with Bob, back in time. we figured we'd go back in time with the maps. Here we are taking a look at the last time the Twins won a championship. It's a map from 1991. And ironically, this location here, the Humpty Dumpty Dome, it's the same shape of the number of championships the Vikings have won. Huh. Weird. And they stuck with that tradition. U.S. Bank Stadium is located in the same spot and the same shape and the same number of championships. As we move ourselves north, straight north of here is where Shoreham Yard is located. 
So if you go straight north, right here, Shoreham Yard, Northtown Yard, and then over in the distance here is Humboldt. But if we bring ourselves down to Shoreham, take a look at all the stuff that was there to all the stuff that is no longer there. One of the few pieces that is remaining is I believe this is one of the car shops. Somebody that knows it better is probably yelling at the screen. I want you having a coronary on us. But this is Shoreham Yard that has then now turned into a container yard. So as we back this out here and take a look at where Bob filmed his footage, it's going to be located right in this stretch here. This train will obviously traverse its way all the way up to um, what would be New Brighton that's located here. And this is the pole yard that we reference, as well as the Minnesota transfer that would come up, now Minnesota Commercial, up to pick up the cars that get dropped off here. Let's swing around and take a look at where the footage would be. And again, Bob is standing right here. The train is coming out of Shoreham and working its way right across through the Columbia Golf Course and working its way up to New Brighton. So Central Avenue is located here. And then, of course, the various cross streets that are along here. And usually when they cut off, it would be up right near Benjamin, which would have been right in this area here. And that's the, uh, the pushers that would be cutting off and then heading back down the hill. That helps us understand kind of where Bob's stomping grounds are. Hopefully you enjoy this clip as much as I do. I think these are EMD Elkos. As you may take note, this train does have four units. The four unit consist will split in half and they will use one set for one train and the other set for another. Continue. On the hatches, uh, kind of breaking them down, this is all one molded piece on the Athern car. There are no little lift levers or latches that go across the actual cover, so it is just one solid piece. Whereas the Arrowhead car, it does have a latch that's separate. They do have the little release. Uh, normally on a car, I used to work on the top of hopper cars, and when you latched them down, there's a little hole that you'd slide the seal through, pull it through tight, and then that would uh, actually hold the latch shut, and it wouldn't be able to pop open or pop free because you didn't want to contaminate the goods that were inside. Um, but there are times an empty car came in and they'd even be plopped open or at least popped up and released. Was that hoodlums that had popped it open and flipped it open? I don't know. But it could have been an, a lazy employee. Yeah, lazy employees at General Mills. But as I look between the top of the hatches on each one of these, these hatches look better. So I'd give a point to Arrowhead for doing a nicer job on the actual uh, hatches uh, just because of that little added detail. Because this, I think, is a great modeling opportunity to be able to give something like that to a car to simulate that it was empty or that it had popped open. We as modelers like to check out what other modelers are up to, starting with the North Metro Model Railroad Club. 
This thing is impressive. As you can see, it's a little bit bigger than a 4x8 sheet of plywood. It has a lot going on, a lot of little details, and every time we return, there's something new that they've done. So if you've not joined a club or you want to and you're in the Twin Cities area, this one is worth checking out. As you can see here, we're looking at an overview of Northtown on the right-hand side with Duluth off in the distance. Here's a little bit better look at Duluth. As you can see, there's some switching off on the left-hand side. These guys do operate, so they do run it with a purpose, and it's not for everybody. If you don't like operations, maybe just like doing some of the detail and scenery, there are guys that are there doing that. And details right down to the guy reading the paper. Boy, I wonder what the headline's on there today. It's got to be awesome looking depot. Yeah, buddy. This is a kit that was created by Scott Peterson. He's also the gentleman that created the kit for the YZ Depot that we had seen on the GN in 1970. I built it. There was a lot to that. There's a lot to this in terms of detail. You can see, obviously, the interior. This is something that the modeler had created, as well as the people out on the platform. You can't go wrong with a little bit more one-to-one -one scale depots, especially in a scale on a railroad like this. As we pivot 180 degrees in the aisle, we find ourselves looking at another Scott Peterson designed and laser cut kit. This is the Milwaukee Road Depot that is well known in Minneapolis. It's a very cool structure, but even cooler when you do it in HO scale. This thing is impressive. You can see the shed that's in the distance there. That shed is not actually full length uh, in terms of prototypical. It has been extended beyond that, but nonetheless, Passenger trains, a little bit of a modeler's license to be able to extend this out a little bit further. And for the kids that might tune in, hey, check it out. You got a little Thomas action. I don't even know the name of that engine. You should. That's Percy, me boy. Here we have ourselves a little Sperry rail car. This thing is cool because it was modified by fellow modeler Aaron. He created this version. And now he modified, obviously, the windows, put in the lights. He's got the beacon. Beacon. He's got all kinds of things that went on to this little particular piece. But at the end of the day, it's cool to see some of the modifications that fellow modelers do. That little beacon on a post like that, you're not going to replace it if it burns out. And he's well aware of that. As you can see, the crew member that's inside the cab... <laughs> I know firsthand how much goes into creating detail like this because of the space that's involved. Very impressive to be able to take a manufacturer's item like this. It's easy to just drop on the track, but it's a whole other ball game to turn it into something like this. So it's very cool. Thank you for sharing this, Aaron. I appreciate you turning the lights on and showing us the beacons. Beacon. Because at the end of the day, checking out what other modelers are doing, that's what it's all about. As I mentioned prior, these guys do operate. They're using a four-sided waybill system with a little pocket. It seems to be working well. I always can tell a good indicator of an operating railroad is how worn out some of the car cards are, because if they're worn out, it means they're operating. I don't know exactly when these guys may operate, I've been invited on a couple of occasions, but haven't had the opportunity to actually make it out. Uh, if you're ever looking to operate here, join the club and you'll know exactly when all these things are happening. So it's definitely cool. Thank you guys for opening these doors and doing such a great job with your modeling. Head -head. Continue. Uh, as we move down the side of the car, uh, some details of these sills. You can see the sills as well as the weld seams that are very prominent on the Athern and not so much on the Arrowhead. They are there, and if I tip them to the side here, you can kind of see that these have the weld seams here, um, but they are very faint. Uh, I hope that when I weather it that they're going to be able to come out a little bit more as well as these two um, seams here on the sill. And I think that they got a little bit closer to more of the prototype. They're not as prominent as what Atherin's got going on. This is something I feel like they've been doing for years, is having very prominent weld seams. So I'd actually give a point to piece for their own. In reality, I'd like to see something a little bit in between those. Raise these up or lower those down. No. <laughs> Now, if we move on to the couplers, the couplers themselves, look how easy that thing uncouples. There's no magnet there, folks. That's just a coupler that's loose. So if you want couplers that don't stay together, you want to go with ones that are all sloppy jalopy like this guy. Uh, and I think this happened in shipping because as you can see, we had lost our, um, our bottom hatch or latch, and then we also lost our air piping. That's something that isn't ideal, but it did come with KDs. So that's a win. Uh, these are the garbage plastic couplers that need to be taken off. Garbage. Throw them in the garbage. Um, but I end up uh, needing to replace these. Some cars are more difficult to take apart. This is just one screw, but I don't like having a plastic coupler on a car. That's a pain in the tail to handle a car like this with such detail. 
to replace out what I consider is just kind of a garbage coupler. Um, so that's kind of the gripe or the complaint about those. Uh, but when we do move on to the bottom of the car and we look at the uh, trucks, the trucks themselves, very nice detail. These do not have roller bearing caps. They do not rotate. They're just molded. These do have the roller bearing caps that do rotate, but they also do pop off. So that's not an ideal element. These have standard tread or regular tread on the actual wheel. These have semi-scale that are more like the Atlas 4650s. Those have tracked well on my railroad, so hopefully these track just as well. Um, we're gonna find out as time goes on. Did you guess how many iconic red and white cabooses the Sioux line had and guessed B, 145? Sioux fact, wood cabooses did last in transfer service into the 1980s. Continue. But as we move on, we'll go to the hatches underneath. And these uh, gates are really finely detailed on the arrowheads and a lot more simplistic on the Athern. So the detail level is far less on the Athern model, but gives the representation of the parts. And these guys really dialed it in, because let's take a look. If you look at the detail on this particular piece, is insane. Um, they've got stuff that's see-through, uh, the multiple pieces that are involved. I don't know why you'd go into this much detail, um, but they did. Even if you don't know what all of these components are specifically, rest assured that Arrowhead is delivering the most accurate ACF center flow ever produced. I do like the detail that's here, um, but I could live with the Athern detail. I don't think you need to go this far. Uh, the airline that popped off of the uh, um, Arrowhead models one wasn't great, uh, so I'll have to replace that. Uh, everything looked good on the underside of the Athern car. And I did have one other little um, piece pop off that looks like this one here. Uh, but it was in the box, so I'm gonna glue it back on. Four units, two cabooses. These two will split and serve one on each train. At the end of the day, when I'm looking at these two cars and I ask myself, well, which car would I purchase another one of? I think both of them are fantastic. But if I'm purchasing another car just based on the details and everything that was involved, um, I think I'd actually end up going with it. We pause this video for a moment to be able to talk about some of the customer service that's involved when you receive an item that isn't necessarily up to your standards. Now, is it your standards that you're setting or is it the manufacturer setting their standards because they say, rest assured that Arrowhead is delivering the most accurate ACF center flow ever produced. And once we hear that, we end up thinking to ourselves, why would you make up a lie like that? Boy, is this the best model that's out there? From a quality standpoint, if we're gonna look at the Arrowhead versus Athern, Athern, they did the better job in terms of execution and the delivery of their car itself. In terms of detail, Arrowhead models blew them out of the water. It made them kind of look foolish because I look at the Arrowhead models and I say, boy, all that detail for the same price as this Athern Genesis, that's where I think Athern Genesis, if that's the top of the line for you, came up a little bit short. Now customer service does come into play. I did reach out to Arrowhead Models and I did note some of the issues. I think you should reach out to your manufacturer, reach out to the, uh, the actual customer service team to see what they can do for you. If you do have an issue, instead of running on the internet and screaming about it, Internet, eh? Now, I did have an issue with another product with another company. They basically said either send it back or just deal with the problem that you've got. Okay, that's fair. So we're gonna deal with the problem that we've got. In this instance, with Arrowhead Models, I reached out and it was actually Blaine that did respond because he is a small business. I fully support him. I have bought his other cars in the past. I don't need those cars. I'm doing it to be able to help them fund their next project. Between these two cars, if you want the most accurate, it is gonna be probably the Arrowhead Models. If you want one that's just a tried and true, it's got the roller bearing caps, go with the Athern Genesis. At the end of the day, it's about enjoying the hobby. And if you're thinking these things are too expensive, I will send you a kit undecorated of all the parts and pieces out of an Arrowhead Models and have you build it. I'll even give you 50 bucks if you build it. Now, all of that is a lie. I don't have an undeck kit. If you're buying into that and asking me to send it, forget about it, it's not happening. But I'm just saying is that as modelers, we're generally not gonna spend all that time, money and effort to be able to create the cars that are being created at the prices they're being put out there. If you don't like it, don't buy it. It's pretty simple. That's all I've got for this rant or this head to head of these two models between Arrowhead and Athern Genesis. Thanks for watching.
Here's the curmudgeon coming at you for the gripe of the week. The gripe of the week this week is about those RTR kits. And you say, RTR kit? That seems like an oxymoron. Well, I do who the moron is. It's the companies that are sending out those high-end fancy cars and there's a bunch of parts and pieces rattling around. Because let me tell you, right now, the curmudgeon opens up a package and he hears that rattling and he thinks, oh, this is going to be good. It's a blue box kit. And it turns out it's one of those high-end models and it's just got a bunch of parts that have fallen off in the ship. Well, at the end of the day, the curmudgeon likes a good blue box kit, but he doesn't like a high-end RTR kit. And that's the curmudgeon's gripe of the week. Curmudgeon opens up a package, and he hears that rattling, and he thinks, oh, this is going to be good. It's a blue box kit. A big thanks to everybody that watches to the end that has hit like, hit subscribe, as well as made comments in the past. It's those actions that help share this content, so if you haven't checked out other episodes, feel free to do so. You can also check out the tour of the GN in 1970, as well as the past episodes of the GN in 1970. 70s. Curmudgeon opens up a package and he hears that rattling and he thinks, oh, this is going to be good. It's a blue box kit. <laughs>